Yow! Ah, another busy summer day. You decide to wander down to Muscle Beach to work out. Your eyes oogling babes. Lost in your work, you nearly miss the Hollywood limousine that pulls in behind you. As the limo stops, a beautiful blonde emerges from the sunroof to announce... My name is Shallow, and I'm looking for one very good man! Out of the way, Bob. Let me at her. Move it. to appear on the new TV show, Stallions! Well, I guess you'll have to do. What's your name? My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> oh, hell. Good enough for who it's for.
After a few glorious moments in the back of the limo, in which you act out your favorite scene from No Way Out while Shallow acts out her favorite scene from Ice Station Zebra, you arrive at the studio and are escorted directly to the set where an episode of Stallions is being taped. And don't worry about thinking up answers while we're taping. We took the answers you gave us earlier and had our writers heat them up a little bit to make them acceptable to our uh, sophisticated viewers. So when it's your turn to answer, just read your cue cards and you'll be just fine. But wait, Miss Shallow. I didn't give you any answers earlier. I haven't gone out with these women. In fact, I've never even seen them before. Oh, don't worry, Lasser. Stallion number two is gonna lose anyway. Do. Places, people. Places. Lights. Playback. In five. Five. From somewhere near Hollywood, California, it's the latest and greatest in embarrassment television. Stallions! Today, featuring three hot young fillies from the Mensa chapter of downtown Pasadena. And also featuring two of the hungest stallions we could pry away from. And now, let's all give a big winnie for the star of our show, Biff Stiff! Welcome back, everybody. Let's meet our contestants. Stallion number two is a professional bodybuilder and part-time out-of-work concrete form dismantler who credits his physical success to Herbivite. Let's hear it for Larry Laffer. Stallion number one is also a professional bodybuilder and an apprentice condom sizer who guarantees that around him, women come first. Really slam them together for rock hard. As you regular fans know, both of these stallions recently had a dream date with each of our three lovely fillies. Cocktails at sunset, a romantic dinner under the stars, dancing by moonlight, followed by a trip back to the stall for a little heavy breathing. Oops, I'm sorry, I meant heavy breathing. <laughs> and now, let's meet our three little fillies. Philly number one is a nuclear chemist specializing in zero-gravity liquid-fueled propulsion systems who has a mainframe computer right in her very own home. Yes, that's right, she really is a rocket scientist. How about some animal noises for Dr. Sharla Main? Philly number two also hails from Pasadena, where she leads a think tank specializing in international economics, monetary systems, and currency stabilization. Get it off for Dr. Sharla O'Hara! And finally, Philly number three is one hunk of prime horseflesh. With PhDs in marine biology, subatomic nuclear physics, and film studies, a woman who expects more from her man than just intelligent conversation, hoot it up for a while for Dr. Sharla Tan. I'm sure you all know the rules, so let's get right to the game. Larry, you're first. Me? Uh... I don't know. I'm not really prepared. Ah, uh, what the hell. Uh, I'll take Greek mythology for $500, Alex. That's about all of this we need to see, isn't it? Let's fast forward. And we're back with our contestants. Larry, what now? Um, could I buy a vowel, Pat? Yikes, this is not going well. Let's cut to the chase. Hey! 
And the winner of today's show, Rock Hard! Rockin' Charlotte with an all-expense-paid cruise down the lovely Mexican Riviera with stops at Tijuana and Juarez. And our second prize goes to Larry Lapper. Immediately after the show, you'll travel by Studio Limo to the exclusive health spa and resort La Costa Lata, where you'll spend a wonderful two, some expenses paid, weeks. Thanks for watching, folks, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow for another episode of... Stallions! Rock, honey, here's your tickets for the cruise. I'm afraid Charlotte won't be going with you. She opted for the cash payoff instead. But you won't be lonely. I'll be waiting for you in your cabin. Whatever. You come with me, doofus. That's Laffer. <laughs> Here's your limo, Lasser. Enjoy the ride. Wow! What a Cherry 73 pacer! Finally, your luck has changed, Larry. Two weeks at an exclusive health spa filled with gorgeous women. La Costa Lada, here I come! Closed circuit cameras from throughout the hotel and spa beam their images here to the security booth, enabling one person to keep an eye on just about everything that happens in every room. That's Daryl, the gate guard. Don't let his amiable looks deceive you. Beneath that sugared exterior lies a heart like a jelly donut. Excuse me, sir. Is this the way out of the spa? Maybe, maybe not. Who's asking? It's me, Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'd like to leave this place and head into town. You know, hit a few of the swinging singles bars, dance to some cool disco music, hit on some better chinks. <laughs> well, I don't have to tell you. <laughs> you look like a swinger yourself. Swinger? Leave? Oh, 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 let me check my roster. No way, Laffer. You ain't getting by me. You just go right back into your room and get with the program. Now, I'm warning you. There must be some sort of misunderstanding. I'm a guest of the famous TV show, Stallions. I was kind of a winner. You probably saw me on the show right here on one of your TVs. Stallions? <laughs> no, can't be. What do you mean, can't be? 
because I know Shallow, the assistant producer of the Stallions, personally. She always arranges these freebie deals herself. Nope, <laughs> it can't be. Um, Shallow was very busy after the show. <laughs> she had to leave quickly on a cruise with the other guy on the show. I'm sure she just forgot to tell you. Don't know nothing about cruises or busy. No, you can't get out until I get a paid receipt. An unused pair of handcuffs dangle from Daryl's belt. I wonder if I could just slip that... Without thinking twice, without blinking an eye, without moving from his stool, Darrell raises one solitary finger and subtly depresses one particular button. An unused bathroom? Each guest room has complete bath-type facilities. That was what you were gonna ask, isn't it? Uh, yeah. But I am a guest here. Why can't I leave? Nobody leaves until they've paid their bill and... But I'm not supposed to pay. Ooh, that's what they all say. Back inside with you, laugher. And don't try to sneak past me. I have ways of making you sorry if you get my drift. Welcome to the front lobby of La Costellata. It's plush and heavily carpeted, yet with an underlying cheapness and shoddiness that makes it unconvincingly decadent. Speaking of which, Where's your toupee? Is it a ficus? A rhododendron? An air fern? What a carpet! The outrageous colors! The mind-numbing patterns! The unmentionable stains! La Costellata allows its preferred customers the convenience of this quickie checkout deposit box. Those lucky customers simply deposit their room keys. It's all on the honor system. You, of course, are ineligible for this program. Welcome to the front lobby of La Costellata. Speaking of which, this counter is where the hotel receives strangers as guests, hence the name Reception. You could rap on the counter, but what good would that be? You can't take the lobby. Rummaging around in this morning's room keys, you grab the one that feels the least sticky. The woman behind the front desk is a real knockout. Although you can only see down to her waist, what you see is what you like. You seem to be unable to look anywhere else. From her wild mane of sandy hair to her bodacious physical attributes, Gammy Boisule is a frighteningly beautiful girl who will try anything once, just for kicks. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope! Look at that voluptuous mouth. Right now there's nothing in the world you wouldn't give to feel the delicate softness of lips like those pressed urgently against your own. Own what? You gaze deeply into Gammy's piercing green eyes as you flutter your own lids as if to say, Baby, your man has arrived. Stop! Thick waves of flaxen hair caress her cheeks and cascade down her shoulders. You gaze... Stop staring at me with that creepy look! I can see the whites of your eyes. 
You may be able to touch her, Larry, but a wild, untamed filly like this one may never be possessed. You can't take Gammy's lips, but play your cards right and you may get to share them. You can't take her hair, she's using it. <laughs> you can't take my top off already. I hardly know you. I'd like to take those beautiful baby greens of yours and carry them around with me, close to my heart. Baby greens? What are you making a salad? Um, I was speaking of your eyes. And you wanted to carry them around with you? Ooh, you are weird. Of course, her firm but pendulous breasts are enough to drive any man insane with lust. But try to restrain yourself. You're overcome with desire to press your finger to those full, sensuous lips. You've done that with women before, and they usually bite. Ow! In your clumsy attempt to be romantic, you accidentally poke Gammy in the eye. You long to run your hands through her silken hair. Please, sir, don't you have any other form of identification? Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'm here as a guest of Stallions, that famous television show. How do you do, sir? I'm Gammy Boisule, head of human services and customer relations here at La Costellata. My job is to make sure your visit here is everything your heart desires. And less. I suppose we could begin by checking into my room. I do have a room, don't I? Oh, but of course, Mr. Laffer. Stallions has taken care of everything for you. Here's your key. You're in room 201, one of our finest suites right at the top of those stairs, conveniently located near the ice machine, elevator, and kitchen exhaust fans. I'm sure you'll find it well worth the price you paid. Say, baby, what time do you, uh, get off? <sighs> Usually right after I get in bed. Oh, uh, uh, what was the question again? How about we get together later? What do you say? Oh, no thank you, Mr. Laffer. My life consists of work and exercise. I really don't have time for a romance. Just work and exercise, huh? What a waste. Hey, no cracks about my waist, okay? I can't help it. God knows I've tried to reduce. In fact, that's why I came here to La Costellata in the first place. To fulfill my dream. You have a dream? Yes, I do. Would you like to talk about it? Yes, I would. My dream was to work here long enough to afford treatment at La Costa Lotta's exclusive cellulite drainage salon. Women came here from around the world to be treated by Dr. Swinebutt, but he was so expensive, I could never afford a complete makeover. Dr. Swinehart, did you say? Who's he? The genius who created La Costellata's Cellulite Drainage Salon's marvelous machine. One suck and you were better than new. Yeah, that's what I always say. But alas, shortly after I arrived here, Dr. Swinebutt was sued for malpractice and his Cellulite Drainage Salon shut down. Since then, his magnificent machine has fallen into disrepair. Oh, how I long for those halcyon days. Say, Gam Baby, I've got an idea. Uh, what if I, your friend Larry Laffer, <laughs> could repair this little machine of yours? You know, fix it up, make it right. Wouldn't that make me your friend for life? Or at least one night. Ooh, oh, Larry, if you could do that, I'd be the happiest woman on earth. And I bet I could make you the happiest man on earth. 
I'll do my best to fix that machine for you, Gammy. You can count on me. <laughs> At least somewhat. Let me know as soon as you get my Wonder Machine repaired, Dr. Fix-It. Have I mentioned I've been celibate for years? Yeah, me too. I'll do my best to fix that le- Yeah. Welcome to the front speak- This room feels so... You can't take the lobby, it's supporting the rest of the building. Instead of using this door, try using the front desk. La Costa Lata furnishes an electric tram to shuttle its aged, tired, or lazy patrons around the hotel. It only appears to be a toilet on a skateboard under a beach umbrella. Excuse me. Hey, hey driver, stop! You're talking to me? Come on, get on board. Hang on. This sculpture is a match to another one around here somewhere. This sculpture is a rare example of the fine carving skills of the now extinct African tribe from the Lac Kanuki region of Mozambique. La Costa Lata really has a thing for sculpture. You've never been in a building so rich with artwork. We have reached the end of the line. Please watch your step getting off the tram. And thank you for riding Art's tram line. Ah, uh, please step out of the way. I, I need to turn my tram around. You are standing in a woodsy area just outside the east end of the hotel. A walk leads off into the bushes to the east. Steps lead north and south, while a smooth sidewalk runs east and west here. The concrete is as smooth as a sharpening stone. No, stop! That wasn't a clue. Almost hidden by the mature landscaping, a large chain-link fence is broken only by a gate with an electronic lock containing a small slot. Blatantly ignoring the high voltage signs on the fence, you walk right up, grab the wires, and attempt to climb the fence. That would have caused permanent brain damage in a better man. There's a lovely little lawn for lounging and lolling at your leisure. These stairs lead down to the beach. To you, this is either a statement against man's inhumanity to man, or the Pope doing gymnastics. This is the presidential suite. Sometimes she lets Bill use it, too. Maybe if you put your eye really close to the peephole, you can watch the itty-bitty people inside. Sorry, come back when my batteries wear down. The door you have knocked on is not a working door. Please check the room number and knock again or ask your front desk person for assistance. Just seeing this door gives you an uncontrollable urge to knock on it. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words Thunderbird, no waiting. Unlike you, this door is well hung. Why, the sculpture of that woman is stark naked. It's a good thing you can't see behind this window frame. The sculpture back there is really nasty. 
Why are all the sculptures in this hotel naked? Or was it a she? If you're delivering the goat, just leave it outside the door until I get the sling erected. There's no response from this room. You don't want to embarrass yourself by getting down on all fours and stroking the carpet, tempting as it may be. If you're delivering the goat... All the hotel room doors are exactly alike. This guy looks familiar. A tiny brass plaque bears the caption, Nuns of Steel. Come back later, we're watching a very brady Rosh Hashanah. Somebody paid a lot of money for this junk. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Castellata logo and the words Health Spa Lobby. I'm sure I saw some guy carve the same sculpture on PBS last week. Of course, it could have been a rerun. This hall contains only one guest room, an ice machine, and a private elevator. A large glass wall at the far end has a security door that effectively blocks your admission to the Costa Club rooms down the hallway. How considerate! La Costellata has placed an ice machine right here for your listening pleasure. Take that! You shout to the upstairs hallway in a fit, or maybe... While you could press the button on the ice machine and cause ice to spill out, you won't. While you... you won't. The guest... the guest... Take that! You sh... or... The... Yeah. Like every other guest... This is the key to your room. Yeah. This... Yeah. Through your deluxe room's deluxe window, you can see various deluxe parts of this deluxe resort. I wonder how often the Costellata has to be reluxed. The pink telephone services card reads... Front desk, may I help you? Uh, yeah, it's me. Larry? Larry Laffer? <laughs> I'm in room 201. Yes, I can see that from the computer. The question was, may I help you? No, I guess not. I was just trying out the telephone. Oh, does it work? Yeah. Then hang up and don't make any more foolish calls. Welcome to La Costa Lada's new automated in-room ordering system for room service. May I help you? Wait, don't answer that. See, there's no one here but us computers. Ha, ha. Pretty funny, ha. Huh? It's a little digital humor. You may press your selection at any time or zero to return to the menu. Press 1 for breakfast. Press 2 for lunch. Press 3 for dinner. Press 4 for morning snacks. Press 5 for afternoon snacks. Press 6 for late night snacks. 
you selected one, breakfast. Press one for full meals. Press two for light meals. Press three for pig out meals. You selected one, full breakfasts. Press one for ham and eggs. Press two for bacon and waffles. Press three for sausage and pancakes. You selected two, bacon and waffles. Press the pound key to confirm, or press the star key to cancel. Thank you for ordering. Checking your account for adequate cash reserves to complete transaction. Please hold. Sorry, you have no credit standing whatsoever with La Costa Lotta. Order any food you want, you won't get it. Bell desk, may I help you? Um, yeah. Um, I, I wonder when you're going to bring up my luggage? Just a moment, Mr. Laffer. Let me check the storeroom. There's nothing here for you. Who shipped your luggage anyway? Well, um, I guess no one. <laughs> uh, thanks anyway. Asshole. What did you say? Concierge desk, Carlos speaking. Mm, beauty isn't everything. <laughs> With you, it's nothing. You got the whitest teeth <laughs> I've ever come across. Mm. When you were born, they threw away the mold. Unfortunately, some of it grew back. You're always learning new ways <laughs> to be stupid. I always enjoy talking to you. <laughs> it gives my mind a rest. Use your head, amigo. It's the little things that count. You're something that one only meets in a bad dream, senor. You should exercise more to work off some of the fat above your neck. If ignorance is bliss, you're in ecstasy. You must have been passed out when the brains were. If you were a stripper, they'd yell, put it on! You're the world's happiest amigo. If ignorance really is bliss, your nose runs more than a tourist in Mexico. <laughs> You're so full of crap it's coming out your ears. You could be a model for horror masks. Senor, want to lose ten ugly pounds? Cut off your head. There is one good thing about your body. It isn't as ugly as your face. What you lack in intelligence, you make up for in stupidity. I never forget a face, but in your case, I'll make an exception. Hey, mi amigo, how long did it take you to become this ignorant? You know, you're nasty, repulsive, repugnant, disagreeable, offensive, belligerent, pugnacious, and antagonistic. And those are your good points. What's this? You want a second opinion? Okay, you smell bad too. When you were born, you were so ugly, the doctor slapped your mother. You have a good head on your shoulders, senor, but it would look better on a neck. You know, amigo, you could make a living hiring yourself out to frighten little children. You know, people like you don't grow on trees. They swing from them. You had a nice figure about 100 pounds ago. The only thing that's getting thinner about you is your hair. I don't know how old you are, senor, but you sure look it. Every person has the right to be ugly, but you abuse the privilege. You have more face to wash and less hair to comb every day. Whoa, if looks could kill, you'd be forced to wear a mask. You know, your left eye must be real fascinating, because your right eye keeps looking at it. 
You haven't got the brains you were born without. Nature is cruel. If you don't believe it, look in the mirror. Ooh, bad breath is one thing, but you could knock a buzzard off a garbage truck. You could go completely out of your mind and no one would know the difference. You know, you got an ugly nose, but it's better looking than the rest of your face. You always got a chip on your shoulder. Your head. The day you were born, senor, your parents went to a lawyer hoping to find a loophole in your birth certificate. Is that your face or did you lie down in front of a truck? Your brain is one of the largest undeveloped areas of the world. You got an open mind and a mouth to match. You'd be a perfect fool, but nobody's perfect. Women think you're dark and handsome. When it's dark, you're handsome. Have a nice day. The pink tele... The red housekeeping services card reads... The blue spa services card reads... The blue spa service... Wow! Dress cool! Complimentary leisure suits! Your bed is vibrating up and down and back and forth. Too bad it can't do more. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. You hear what sounds like a small elevator going past your room. Your bed is narrower and shorter than you. I wish I had a dollar for every... You yank the carpet as hard as you can, but... Uh-huh. Nice try. A beautiful bouquet of tropical flowers sits on your coffee table. You hear the obnoxiously loud whine of a compressor emanating from somewhere below you near the kitchen. This door leads to your shower. I vow not to enter this shower until I have a beautiful babe on my arm to wash my back and another beautiful babe on my other arm to wash my front. Looks like you'll be showering in the men's locker room for the rest of this game. Isn't, isn't that cute? The bathroom is equipped with cold drink coasters in the shape of flowers. This stainless steel toilet seat cover holder blocks the view a little and for no purpose. The darn thing is empty. This door leads back. You flush the toilet. Finally, the right place. You flush the toilet. Good boy. Yuck! The water coming out of the sink is brown.
While you sometimes do that when you're in a hurry, you decide not to do it here. Yuck! Yes, hello, this is Building Maintenance, Landscaping and Grounds. May I please to be helping you? Hello? There's brown water coming out of my bathroom sink. Is there anything you can do about it? Ah, yes, but of course, Mr. Laffer. I am so sorry. Let me send up one of our best men. Right away, pronto, soon, quick, quick. Oh, and please to be accepting our sincere apology for any inconvenience and perhaps if you are suffering. Ah, uh, perhaps I can make some adjustment to your bill. Please, just a moment while I check the computer. Oh, I see. Never mind. Uh, Mr. Laffer, I'll be sure to send up somebody sometime. Maybe in a few hours. Maybe never. And please, don't bother calling back. Housekeeping, may I help you? This is Larry Laffer. <laughs> yeah, I notice you have something called a turndown service. Is this something I need to request? Usually I have no trouble getting turned down. Yes, you do, Mr. Laffer. I'll make a note of it. This evening, we leave a little gift for you and your pillow. Oh boy, I love presents. Hello, you've reached La Costa Lata's excursion desk. For tomorrow, we have planned a wonderful trip for your vacationing pleasure. Our American Empress tour will begin early in the morning with a trip through an authentic local fast food restaurant's drive-up window. Next, we will travel to an indigenous nearby area to study native shopping rituals followed by a trip to an actual functioning supermarket. You'll enjoy lunch at a local diner, followed by a short hop into an authentic laundromat, where you'll see locals engage in traditional activities before your very eyes. The afternoon will conclude with a visit to a real automobile repair center, where hapless locals sit trapped waiting and watching television while their children run wild all around them. We'll return in plenty of time for you to shower and clean up before anyone sees you. Don't miss this exciting look at a life you've never seen. Only $350 per person, meals included. Only limited seating is available, so please reserve now. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. This shelf of the cart is filled with clean white terry cloth towels. This shelf of the a package of thin paper toilet seat covers rests on the cart. What a ritzy resort! They even give out complimentary dental floss. I bet I could use a towel sometime. Leave. I could use these for tracing paper. I can always use some more dental floss. You don't one. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other funny. You haven't seen any of this stuff. Fresh toilet paper is always necessary. Fre How impressive! Imported oat bran soap. La Costellata's white washcloths are elegantly engraved with a large flowing H. Maybe they got them on sale. Here's some hand cream. Hand cream might be good for those itchy palms of yours. Use this when you want to make a good impression. 
I'll bet the maid was going to leave me a washcloth. She was probably going to give you a fresh roll of toilet paper today anyway. Isn't you don't? You rub the aloe vera lotion into a few of those dry places on your knuckles. Good idea! You bend over the pot and carefully install an ass gasket. You carefully adjust your clothing. Ah! Good idea! You don't need to have You might no one turn on the water Yuck You wet the washcloth in the water you're wet. You briefly consider stuffing the toilet with a whole roll of toilet paper. But you outgrew such juvenile behavior years ago. Oh yeah? Okay, okay, you stuff the entire roll of toilet paper into the commode. Are we happy now? Oh no, the water's rising. Now your toilet is backed up. How will you explain this to the management? You wouldn't want to wash your hands in brown water. maintenance, landscaping, and grounds? Yeah, I've still got brown water. Sir, this is maintenance. I believe you're looking for the infirmary. Huh? Oh, wait, not me. <laughs> I mean, the water coming out of the sink in my bathroom is brown. Oh, but you did not say that. Please let me look. Ah, yes, you did call earlier. Yes, sir. It says here on the computer we dispatched an adequate plumber a few minutes ago. I'm sure he'll be there soon, if he isn't in there with you already. Oh. <laughs> this door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Castellata logo and the words Dining Room. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Castellata logo and the word. The sign reads, Health Spa. This is the lobby of La Castellata's exclusive health spa. A person waits behind the counter. There are several doors. This is... There's a tasteful marble fountain in the middle of the lobby. It provides the familiar soothing sound of recirculating dirty water. The marble statue is far too heavy to lift. But you did manage to cop a quick feel. Leave it here for now. Leave it here. I do love a room totally covered in indoor-outdoor carpeting. I do. I... 
Excuse me, sir. Do you mind if I fondle your brochure? Oh, be still my beating heart. Hi, big boy. New around here? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> and leaving soon, I hope. Ooh, such a tease! Rubbing your fingers across the brochure advertising La Costellata's many fine services and features, you remark... What an expansive feel. <gasps> oh, no, I'm not! Shall I just sign my name here in the registry? Oh, yes, please. And don't forget your room number, okay? Yikes. You never can tell when I might want to learn what other wonderful features are available here at lovely La Costellata. Hey, how come my room doesn't look like the one in the picture there? And where are all those fabulous babes? And look, most of them are naked! That's me on page three standing behind Billy D. Close behind. Gary, the towel attendant, flits around behind the towel counter, straightening up things that are already straight and trying to unstraighten things that are straight. Does this mean you want to take me out on a date? Oh, I accept, I accept! Ah, uh, you just knew I would enjoy that, didn't you? Well, you're right, I did! Oh, sweetie, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, no. What have I done? It doesn't seem like there are enough customers here to warrant a full-time towel attendant. Oh, I do more than this. Much, much more. Oh, I don't want to know. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, High Colonic Treatment Suite. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Men's Locker Room. You, the ridicule, the shame, the snapping towels. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Women's Locker Room. To you, this is the ultimate in forbidden fruit. Behind this door lies sights you've never even dared to imagine. Pink tile, sit-down urinals, lilac scent, and much, much more. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Cellulite Drainage Salon. Oh, don't go in there. Anyway, why would you want to? There's nothing inside but women changing clothes. If you have any trouble in the locker room, just squeal! What? Where? You can't see anything over there. What are you doing? Good idea. You know in every game, Al Lowe always hides something in the garbage can. You can't wait to find out what it will be in this game. You have enough garbage in your life already. Oh, how embarrassing. La Costellata hangs a painting of a naked woman right here where a guy might glance at it while undressed and get, uh, you know, <clears throat> interested or something. This particular locker is not in use. Powder finished baked enamel on 14 gauge steel makes for an attractive if still odious locker bay. Powder finished
Hey, stop looking at the naked men. You're supposed to be looking at naked women. The men's shower room is completely lined with tile, causing a wonderful echo when you walk and a deep, rich resonance when you talk. You carefully... Ah! You... Can't you... Strange. One of these tiles is off color. This tile looks loose. Oh my god! Who's that? Is someone here? You are looking and hard. Looking hard, that is. What do you think this is? Porkies? Besides, this wall is too thick. And it's not that thick. You can think of nothing to say to that. You are looking. Look. <laughs> now you really need a shower. The handle beside the mudroom door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costa Lotta logo and the words, The Prancing Fluids. You turn off the... Pr you miss your friends. La Costa Lotta's Euro mud baths are built right into the floor, Roman style. The mud looks warm and inviting. Look at the shine on that leaf. This mud bath looks just right. A video camera is mounted on the wall beside that air vent. It enables La Costellata's crack security force to keep an eye on activities here in the mud room. You may want to direct your attention to that young lady sitting all alone in the mud. You have no... You cleverly attempt to re-aim the camera through the louvers leading into the women's shower, but you cannot. The camera is held firmly in place by a large bolt, which is far too tight for you to turn with only your fingers. While you don't need to return the... Larry, that not if you expect to live long. Don't snap your tongue. Don't.
La Castellata's spacious sauna is extremely warm. Electrically heated rocks generate a tremendous amount of heat. Good idea! Burn off your hand. It would be like losing an old girlfriend. Good idea! Pick up a heavy rock that must be 400 degrees. I remember the last time I did that. Man, did that stink! This mud bath, La Costellata's Euro Mud, La Costellata. Oops. Hello, my name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Allow me to slip out of this warm, caressing mud for a moment, Larry. I'm Charlotte Donay, but you may call me Shaw. I hope you'll excuse the way I'm dressed. Oh, I think you'll look just perfect. <laughs> yep, never seen better. Oh, my poor dear. You are lonely, aren't you? Now, feel free to take all the mud you want from the mud bath. But if you took any from my body, why... Why, you'd be able to see my naked flesh. And we wouldn't want that now, would we? Speak for yourself, honey. Take my eyes, I'll never use them. Take my... Hey, wait a minute. Do we have the rights to this song? I don't know. Did Dan Keeler write it? Ha! Guess not. Better try something else. Charlotte, I'd like to take you away from all this. Where would we go, Larry? I'm only here in the mud because the Electroshock Exercise Center is closed. Charlotte, I'd like to... Oh. Look, I can sign my name in your mud pack. Hey, watch where you go with the tail of that Y. Are you sure you... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Nah. You're not worthy. Even covered with mud, Charlotte Denae is a striking woman. Oh! Charlotte's smoldering eyes reveal that beneath that sultry, vixenish exterior, she's got the soul of a real slut. Charlotte's slender neck... Charlotte's slender neck is graceful and sexy. You wouldn't mind having a neck like that yourself. Char's naked body is barely covered by the specially processed mud from La Costellata's famous mud pits out back. For some... You are one of the most beautiful women I've ever met, Char. Oh, darling, you're so sweet to say that. But really, I'm just a simple, electricity-loving woman. Just give me a few heavy-duty D-cells and I'm set for the evening. Want to hear my Muddy Waters impersonation? No. I knew that. You don't mean that literally, do you? I mean, you're not one of those, you know, one of those. Those? Oh, heavens no! 
Let's just say I love my stimulation wherever I find it. But I am totally partial. I prefer the real thing above the artificial every time. What the hell are we talking about? Is there anything you'd like, Char? Um, perhaps I could buy you a drink? Drink? Oh no, the attendant here keeps us all in fruit juice. But you know, there is one thing. Anything, babe. Anything your breast, um, um, I mean, your heart desires. There's one thing I need that I haven't been able to find at La Costa Lauder. Oh, tell me, anything you want. I promise, if I can get it, it'll be yours. Oh, that's great. And the way I see it, when I get what I want, then you get what you want. <gasps> what exactly is it you want, my sweet Chardonnay? Simple. I could really use six D sales for my own late night friends. Huh? She has a battery powered David Letterman? Huh, well, that sounds easy enough, Char. Why, sure, Larry. After all, how hard can it be? Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. I'm off, Char, but uh, I'll be right back with your batteries. This door bears a tiny brass plaque. You try the knob, but the door is kept locked by an electronic keypad with billions and billions of possible combinations. We'll pause a moment while you enter every one of them. Okay, done. Now, how could you open a sensitive electrical device like this, since you don't have a sledgehammer? Hey, I wonder what would happen if I stuck my finger in this electrical outlet. You might... While once these shower heads could be adjusted, the mineral deposits in the local water supply now have them corroded firmly in place. A nice hot shower always makes me feel like a new man. Me too, sweetheart! And here I am! Isn't that thoughtful? The maid turned down your bed, and instead of leaving you a chocolate, left you a condom. You grab the condom from your pillow. Mark, the spa plumber, is working hard to correct your stopped-up toilet. 
Wouldn't you think he'd remove that huge tool belt before commencing his plunging? Oh, let me guess. Just in from San Francisco. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple adjustable wrench. Oh, hi. Thanks for fixing my toilet. Are you the one who did this? Um, um... Uh, um, why, uh, well, um, uh, no, I didn't do that. I bet! Why, um, no, it, uh, it, it was my wife. Morgan Fairchild. Whom I've seen naked. Hey! Let the door hit you in the ass on your way out, okay? Uh, yeah, I was just leaving. Oh, let me... Wait until Mark's finished. Using the plumber's wrench, you loosen the large bolt holding the video camera in place. Then turn the camera so it's looking directly into the women's shower. Too bad you can't see the monitors now. At least you've given someone a good time. While you don't need to return the plants to where you found them, you feel sure your mother would be proud of you. It's a leg bench, a state-of-the-art resistance machine designed to firm up those quadrupeds, define those incisors, and trim those sartorials. This is the weight room, where you can find everything you need to beef up, put some ripples on your bread basket, lose that beer gut, and see a little cheesecake. Hmm, suddenly I feel hungry. 
Babe alert! A sleek, sweaty super chick works out on the stair machine, wearing a shiny polyester workout suit. What more could you ask for? Truly, here's your perfect woman. Big breasts and man-made fabrics. Some egghead is actually trying to read while she gets her cellulite redistributed. And no, that was not a free plug for some electronic boutique that sells software, etc. You run your hand over the surface, giving your hand a tremendous workout as you... Ah! Hi, cutie. How you doing? What? You! Climb on! Lay down and shut up, boy! My name is Christina Priscilla Diana Van Dyke. Oh. Do I have to remember all that? But the only people who called me that are dead now. Oh. You may, and in fact will, Call me Thunderbird! Sure, anytime. But first, how's about you doing a little something for me? Hey, Hannibal Lecter! Keep that finger out of my eye! Halt! You may only admire these from afar. For now, at least. You like leather, little man boy? I've got more leather than you know what to do with. Only you wouldn't know what to do with it. Wait a minute. Well, you know what I mean. You can't take my hair. It's one of my three best features. Halt! For now. Halt! For... You missed me! I'm over here. Those are two of the most magnificent, awe-inspiring, mouth-watering, five-car pileup causing breasts that any woman has ever possessed. Thunderbird's got that famous downward smile that Charlene Tilton perfected. It makes her look sexy, forbidden, unhappy, and expensive. Her eyes are blue. No, maybe they're brown. Wait, they could be hazel. Oh, it's hard to tell what color her eyes are. Who could see anything but those glorious breasts? Thunderbird's curly auburn hair cascades down the back of her head and across her shoulders. Just for a moment, you wonder what it would be like if you were small enough to run naked through that forest of hair. Actually, you're nearly the correct size now. Thunderbird has two of the most perfectly formed hips you've ever seen on a woman. Thunderbird's hands are graceful and supple, and her fingers are so, so, so close to that incredible chest. Hello, miss. I couldn't help but notice the muscles in your inner thighs. What? I mean, I couldn't help notice the uh, magic in your intense eyes. Nice outfit. When are you going to stop having your mommy pick out your clothes? Oh, she doesn't pick out my clothes anymore. I think a 90s guy has to know when to bypass the fickle whims of Paris haughty couture and stick with the stylish lines of a true classic. Hence, the white leisure suit has become, how may I say it, something of a symbol of mine. Hmm. I see. I gotta admit, it's you. I thank you. You don't know how many people comment on it. Oh, I can imagine. What brings you to La Costa Lana, little boy? Oh, I'm here on a junket, actually. <laughs> you see, 
I was one of the winners of a recent broadcast of Stallions, that hot new TV show for hot new studs like, um, what? So I suppose you'll be here for the two-week visit, instead of the weekend the first place guys receive. Gosh, Thunderbird, you sure do know your TV shows. I should. How do you think I got here? So, babe, um, what do you say you and me get to know each other a little better? Honey, there's not much about you I need to know. And there's not much about me you'd care to learn. But, I suppose a little session later on would be okay. Are you trying to threaten me, boy? Watch out, or I'll use that wrench to loosen your nuts. Don't you just love where that staple goes right through my navel? Gee, thanks. Got any place I can hang this? Mm -hmm. I swept those things from the maids' carts, too. Your room? Ha! Huh. You probably don't have any equipment there. Honey, I'm more into stainless... Thanks. I know just where to apply this. Better not. No thanks. I just have one problem, Larry. Uh, problem? Uh, what problem, T-Bird? That's Thunderbird to you, Larry. Oh. My problem is simple. I'm having so much fun here that I wore out my only pair of handcuffs. So, if you want to have fun with me, you'll have to bring me a little hardware. Handcuffs? Where am I supposed to get handcuffs at a health spa? That's your problem, Laffer. All I know is, I'm going to sit here and work this machine until you do. So come back anytime, but bring a little hardware with you. It's a good thing I turned that camera around and aimed it into the woman's shower. Daryl is so absorbed in your new television spectacular, you are able to remove the handcuffs without his detection. Without thinking twice, without... The dials and pressure-sensitive buttons on these panels control the gate, the security cameras and monitors, the Muzak, the temperature of the pool water, the local climate, and the sign out front that announces the total number of soy burgers sold thus far. Halt! Who go- It's me, Larry Laffer. <laughs> I was just going to walk to town, find a swinging- That's what you think, fella.
handcuffs. Where am I supposed to get handcuffs? That's your problem. Handcuff? That's you. Look what I brought you, Miss Thunderbird. A genuine pair of chrome-plated, serial-numbered, auto-latching, inexpensive resort cop handcuffs. I only hope you'll find them acceptable. Jeez, Taiwan again. You know how fast the chrome wears off these babies? Oh, well, at least you made the effort. Tell you what, I'll go back to my room and get dressed up. You stop by later. And don't take too long either. You got it? But I... Shut up! I'm out of here. And don't be late! Uh, but, uh, but, uh, what room are you in? This device works to strengthen the inner thighs and simultaneously permanently detach the knee cartilage. It's the crippled butterfly station. You run your hand over the surface. Ah. It's the new Supercellulite Bun Shaker 600. You run... You fondle the still warm, heavy-duty, wide rubber belt that's now hanging unused from the chassis of the Supercellulite Bun Shaker 600. You remove the wide rubber belt from the Supercellulite Bun Shaker The rubber belt reminds you of an elastic bandage for sumo wrestlers. All the hotel... This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words Thunderbird, no waiting. Woolard's World of Leather? I'll be right there. Oh, it's you. I was, um, expecting someone else first, but don't worry. Thanks for coming, Larry. I'm so happy to see you again. Uh, nice room, Thunderbird. I've never seen a place quite like this before. I bet I've got a lot of things here you've never seen before. Oh boy. I've fixed you a drink. Help yourself. It's on the table. I can tell how much you enjoy your gold chains. Yes, I, I do. Uh, to me, they're a sign of virility. Whatever. Allow me to add a little ring around your collar. What? Uh, do I really need to wear this? <laughs> it feels like a dog collar. It is, my naughty little puppy. But it is a very nice collar for a very nice little doggy. What have you gotten yourself into this time, Larry? May I help you undress? Well, I... Uh... <sighs> Say, what the hell kind of date is this anyway? Down on your hands and knees, dog. Sit, boy. Sit up. Speak.
Woof. Louder! I can't hear you! Woof. Yes, that's right. You're the puppy dog, and I'm the mommy dog. Well, you are quite the bitch. You awaken from an especially bad nightmare with a start. No! Oh, thank heaven. It was only a dream. Oh, really? Then where did you get that dog collar? Thunderbird may have been sadistic, but at least she has a generous side. Your new dog collar came complete with a large diamond. You carefully remove the large diamond and discard the stupid dog collar. Mark, the spa plumber, lies under your sink working hard to correct your brown water. Wouldn't you think he'd be uncomfortable lying on that huge tool belt? Ooh, hey, that tickles. Hey, what are you, some kind of fag? Get your hands off of me. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple file. Mark has nothing more for you to ste uh, borrow. A beautiful bouquet of tropical flowers sits on your coffee table. Isn't that nice? A beautiful maid came in here and turned down your bed. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time that's happened. I got your water problem taken care of, Mr. Leper. You won't have any more troubles now. Thank you. If I do, I'll ask for you. How did I know that? Housekeeping, may I help you? Yes, my bathroom is totally unstocked. Uh, don't you give lots of little free thingies here? You know, shower caps, tiny bottles of shampoo, shoehorns, stuff like that? Why no, we don't. Well, how about toilet paper, towels, washcloths, you know, I should get those, right? Yes, you should. I'll send the maid up to service you right away. All right. That would be fine. Tell her to just barge right in, regardless of the condition I'm in. Oh, our help never enters a guest room while someone is there. Strict policy. Simple courtesy, you know. Also, it prevents lawsuits from schmucks who want to accost our maids. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose I'll head down to the pool now. 
Good. The sooner you leave, the sooner you'll get serviced. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloth. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your... She was probably going to give you a fresh roll of toilet paper today anyway. La Costellata thoughtfully places fresh flowers in every guest's room. Finally, the right place. You flush the toilet. Good boy. Good idea. You bend over the pot and carefully install an ass gasket. You pause for just a moment to study the one who loves you most. You. You carefully adjust your clothing. Ah. You ca ah. You hope no. Good idea. You flush the toilet. Your wet washcloth smells nice. Hey, you can never get a washcloth too. Your wet wash... Your... Hey, you can never get a washcloth too wet. You don't need to have... That really... Sure, you could rub the soap all over yourself right now, but wouldn't you really rather wait until you're in the shower? You don't really need a shower now. Isn't that nice? Yeah. The pool shimmering in the sunlight looks invitingly warm. Or maybe that's just an illusion caused by the reflection of sunlight on the water which seems to be aimed directly at your eyes and will probably burn out your corneas in another few seconds if you don't look at something else. I'll do my best to... Let me know as soon as you get my Wonder Machine repaired. Yeah.
How delightfully primitive. A moo cow in hillside pasture. Rosé's room is covered with flowers. She must really love fragrance. It smells like a greenhouse in here. What a massive piece of plumbing. Not. What? I wish I had a dollar for every time I've... Not. This thing sucks. This thing... Obviously something goes on in this room that requires quite a bit of pressure. Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer? <laughs> Rosé's breasts are pert and perfect. Which is which? Look at that strong, graceful neck. For just a moment you imagine it straining in a paroxysm of pleasure as Rosé performs nature's mystery dance of love with a virile young hunk like yourself. Well, kind of like yourself, only virile, young, and hunky. Rosé has deep, dark, penetrating, liquid brown eyes. No. Nope. Rosé's full, pouting lips give her an air of youthful innocence, tinged with blossoming sexuality that brings to mind such coquettish young babes as Brooke Shields, Uma Thurman, and Amy Fisher. You are up close and personal with Rosé Elita. One. Rosé has fine, shoulder-length brown hair <laughs> How cute! Is it cold in here, or is it just me? Mm, no need to my tube top touch. Rosé tell you. It is 50-50 cotton poly blend floral print pattern by Armani of Beverly Hills. Satisfied? Hardly, but that's enough clothing information. You gently brush your hand along Rosé's arm. Immediately, a thrill of sensual pleasure races up your arm, across your shoulder, up your neck to your scalp, bounces right off, then shoots back down your neck, past your waist, and ends up somewhere south of Burbank. No, no, no. I have not given you permission to touch my neck. Permission granted. Gracias. You're welcome. As much as you would love to touch those full, soft lips, you restrain yourself. After all, she bites. Or at least you hope she... She's so realistic you could almost reach out and touch her. But you can't. Not until Sierra makes some truly major improvements in interactive entertainment. Since I have permission, um, <clears throat> I'm going to touch your neck. You may have the permission, but you don't have the permit. Since you... No, 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 you may not fluff my hair. I have not given you permission. May I have your permission to fluff your hair? Oh, not yet, pale little man. You have much to experience first. She's so realistic. She's so... She's... Rosé's eyes... Play your cards right and she may turn up your volume. Welcome to La Castellata's High Kalanic Treatment Suite, Mr. Laffer. Your presence here is welcome to me, Rosé Alita, and your attendant person duty. Hokey dokey it is, Laffer. Sometimes I understand not your English so good. You see, Rosé, very new in U.S. of A. From Spain, I have come just. How long have you been in this country, Rosé? Maybe 3,000 miles. In country not far, but English speak good, no? Uh, no, um, I mean, yes. What brought you to America? Airplane. But what I mean is, why did you leave Spain and journey all this way? Simply, to America I come to be an au pair for a pair of children. Au pair, huh? You must enjoy working with children, huh? No, making children much more to my liking. But give up tending children I did. Bad hours. Expect you to leave bed during night. Not Rosé. When bed I go, I go for hours. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. 
Rosé, would you like to try a little something special with me? I consider myself quite the continental type. <laughs> Very sophisticated and uh, urbane. Just that nice. But where I come from, women expect gift before freebie. Say, this girl is continental. I can understand how a woman might want a gift. <laughs> but um, what exactly would please you, Rosé? Just look around you, Lawrence. Tell my likes. You know you can. Hmm, I see. Why don't women ever give you a straight answer? I can under... What? La Costa lot of... Hey, here you go, Rosie. I'd like to give you a little something special. I can see how much you enjoy flowers. Oh, gracias, Lawrence. They are most beautiful. I'll put them right over here. And in return, I'd like to give you a little something special, mi nuevo amigo. Hey, Larry, finally you're going to get lucky, and with this hot Spanish senorita, too. Please to examine closely the painting on the wall over there. I believe you will surely enjoy that which will follow. I will make you experience feelings you never knew before. That wouldn't be hard. You will feel like a new man. Good, cause the old man wasn't getting any. Why am I looking at a painting? Why is she running that Harley with the carb too rich? Are you ready for a good time? Oh, I've been ready for 30 years. I'm all yours, Rosé. Okay, honey. Drop those pants. Finally, Larry. But shouldn't she at least dim the lights? Whoa! What's that? Rosé, uh, exactly what does high colonic mean? it wonderful? Am I right? Isn't it a feeling you've never felt before? Ah! Rosé? I've never felt more emotions in such a short period of time. Yes, I know. All my customers say that. But here, Lawrence, allow me to give you a little something in return. 
No! Not again! Oh, you silly! No! These! Why, Rosé! What a beautiful orchid! It's... It's... It's so... Prom night! Thank you, Larry! Come back soon, so we can do this again, okay? You know, I don't feel pooped anymore. See? And also you are not so full of sheet. What did she say? When are you gonna learn to stay away from women, sweetie? All around the makeup classroom, large monitors show a video entitled Kiss and Makeup, the La Costa Lotta Way. Ow. Oh. This is the only desk without a working lamp. A woman sits at this desk, trying her best to ignore you completely. But you really don't care as your eyes are attracted to that dark-skinned beauty at the right desk in the front row. A woman sits at this desk. An electrical cord lies on the floor unused. Could this be the missing cord? You carefully strip away approximately two centimeters of insulation from the end of the wire without the three-pin grounded plug. One end of the electrical cord has a standard plug on it. The other end is now bare wire. You'd better be careful plugging this thing into an outlet. Those bare wires could deliver quite a charge. A woman sits at the... You take a closer look at the lovely young thing sitting at the right front makeup table. What full, sensitive lips. You long to taste them. And other things, too. You can only imagine what must lie beneath that top. Since you'll never actually see it in this game. You can only imagine... Since you... Chablis' hair has that wild, untamed, tribal look that says, I dare you to try and brush me. Just try. Chablis' beautiful eyes glisten in the lights of her makeup mirror. Hey, what do you think? You're the only guy with one of those? Oh, hold your horses, Larry. Cool down. Uh, uh, uh. Aren't you forgetting something? A small length of sheep's intestines, perhaps? Gee, Chablis really knows how to set the mood. You enjoy the touching part, don't you? Her eyes are hazel, large and deep and liquid. She's either tremendously sexy, or has an advanced case of myopia, or both. You enjoy... Oh no, none of that touchy-feely stuff until I'm ready to play. And I think you're holding up the party. Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer? <laughs> 
Why, hello. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. You may call me Chablis. I'm rather new around here. <clears throat> Have you been here long? Oh, not that long. Are you going to the big weight loss spring formal? Weight loss spring formal? Uh, what's that? <laughs> Sounds like a prom. Right you are, Larry. I've been searching everywhere for a new dress, but I just can't find one with that, um, certain something I crave. Shopping? Here? Where? I haven't seen a single store. Oh, they're here, all right. You're just not a shopper like me. My motto is, Veni, Vidi, Visa. I came, I saw, I shopped. So, uh, you'd like a new dress, huh? Oh, yes. If I could only find something brilliant, why, I'd... I'd... Hell, I don't know what I'd do. But what's the use? I'll just have to wear something old, I suppose. Not having a new dress to wear to the ball is so humiliating. Don't worry, Shibli. I know right where to find you a dress. I do know where to find a dress, don't I? This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Castellata logo and the words, Dining Room. There's no use putting real flowers on the table when these plastic jobs smell even stronger. You don't really. La Castellata's salad bar is presently nothing but off-color, half-melted ice. Come back at dinner time and it will be different. Yeah, by then it'll be off color, fully melted ice. However, you do notice a faint trace of color under one section of the ice. Seeing a hint of color beneath the ice, you dig away until you uncover a fresh orange left over from breakfast. It seems to be in surprisingly good shape. I might as well take this orange. You never know when a guy might want something to, uh, suck on. A window into the kitchen shows La Castellata's gourmet chefs preparing the next meal in a frenzy of activity. La Castellata, yeah, how a La Castellata's kitchen looks nothing like you expected. There are no chefs anywhere in sight, but there is a large taco truck parked here. Why look, the chefs that appeared to be working so hard from out there in the dining room are nothing more than a rear projection movie. The kitchen's stainless steel sink is quite deep. Evidently at one time, There's a handle and some kind of bucket buried in the trash. Carrying around a trash can won't it? Carry, carry. 
Of course, digging through the trash is always a good idea in an Al Lowe game. Hey, look! Somebody threw away a five-gallon can of lard. La Costellata's kitchen looks nothing like you expected. While you would like... Four large refrigerators nearly fill the wall. A meat cleaver sticks out of a chopping block. This tire has plenty of high-pressure air inside. Mundo. This tank looks into the swimming pool. It's like being at an aquarium, only the fish are babes. Welcome to La Costellata's Blues Bar. A full-service bar is available to meet all your refreshment needs. Comfortable seating is offered in a relaxed contemporary atmosphere. And of course, the best in entertainment is yours to enjoy 24 hours a day. Welcome to La Cost Comfortable. Welcome to Comfortable. Welcome to Comf Welcome Com The bartender here in the Blues Bar has seen better days. No one wants to tip a guy who only serves non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, no thanks. I've got enough swizzle sticks already, okay? I could really use a whiskey. Me too, buddy boo. I'm sorry, but the closest thing we have is sproutberry juice. All the hotel room doors are exactly alike. There's no way you'd ever escape La Costellata through that horrible jungle. You've heard it's filled with man-eaters. No, wait, that was the disco. Hmm, is there something sticking out of the sand over there? Since nobody's watching, I could build a sand castle. Right here. Hey, what's this? 
While your sand castle will win no prizes, your diggings have revealed an ancient whale oil lamp buried in the sand. I'd better cover this up before anyone sees how dorky it looks. A lovely tern flies by lazily overhead. The crystal clear waters of the pool are deliciously inviting. This girl's a real looker. She's got adorable freckles from head to toe. Trolling for sardines, are we, hmm? Oh. Hey, honey, there may be a lot of fish in the sea, but uh, I'm your catch of the day. You? No, I'd have to throw you back for being undersized. She's not that taken with you. The inflatable beaver feels like it is out of air. Be careful, it might sunburn. Like this? Hiya, sweetie. Since you're a sun worshipper and, well, I'm a sun, why don't you come up to my place and worship me? Bug off or I'll kick you where the sun won't shine. Hiya, sweetie. Bu you can't just take her. She's not an animal, she's a human being. Sorry, I refuse to play match him with an uh, unarmed man. No. Oh. Hello, my name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'd like to go swimming here. It looks like you need a swimsuit first there, uh, Larry Larry. But feel free to change clothes in our exclusive European uh, changing bushes. They're right over there on the other side. empty lounge chair. There's nothing quite like the pleasure of lying under a tropical sun on hot, sweaty vinyl. Unless it's the pleasure of tracing the web mark patterns embossed in your back afterwards. Ah, unless, ah, unless, unless. Amazingly enough, La Costellata has covered the bar with a non-slip surface that even withstands belly flop waves. A cash register sits totally unused at the rear of the bar. Someone has left an expensive sunglass case lying on the bar. From here, you are unable to ascertain its con- Sneaking over to the edge of the pool and leaning way out, you inquire about that pair of sunglasses lying on the bar. Anybody lose these? Well, guess they're mine now. You have a deluxe sunglasses case that doesn't appear to be empty. It's hard to tell right now since it's still closed. You open the sunglasses case. Hey, nice pair of shades. Perfect for lounging around poolside. These must be deluxe sunglasses. They come complete with their very own cute little white polishing cloth. Genuine bar nays. This cute little swatch of cloth is nearly as small as some of those floss bikinis you've seen on the beach. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words Aerobics Classroom.
what a wonderful place you've stumbled upon, Larry. A room filled with hot, sweaty women dressed in skimpy, tight-fitting outfits. Peering through Cav's record collection, you find one album that particularly excites you. The soundtrack from Leisure Suit Larry Six, Shape Up or Slip Out, written and produced by Dan Kaler. Keep your hands off my stereo system, you idiot! Perhaps I shouldn't bother her. She's quite focused on her work. Perhaps I should anger the This lady is too busy checking out the other girl's body. Maybe I'll join in. I haven't worked out in the last three games. You! Yes, you! Keep up! Hey, white suit! You are falling behind! Isn't letting you keep up! You! Yes, you! The one with no breasts! You've got no rhythm at all! That's it! Forget it! Class dismissed! Everybody out! All right! Now that those girls are out of here, <laughs> I've got the aerobics babe all to myself. Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, little man. My name is Cavarici Fuarne. And based upon your proven athletic abilities, your name should be on my class roster. Gee, thanks. I guess. Ooh la la. Don't you just love this brochure? Oh, those pictures of naked women. Huh? What are you, an idiot? Why would I want that? Watch it, pal. You'd take anything you can get, wouldn't you? Oops, uh, I thought you wouldn't want that. You'd... You... Oops. Feel free to check out those abs. Pretty impressive, no? No flab on me, baby. Solid rock. Ooh la la! Nice muscle development on that right hand, Larry. You've been working out with it? Uh, sorta. Well, nice job. Keep it up. That, that's uh, what I was trying to do. Sorry, Larry. You oh. No. I see you're interested in my employee identification card. Kath, do you think it's possible for a hunk like me to develop an even better body? No. Yeah, it is a work of art, isn't it? Art wasn't the man I was thinking of. Which do you admire more, my body or my mind? <laughs> Larry, you're one of the few men with equal development in both places. How did you end up with such a great job, Cav? It doesn't pay that well, but uh, at least I'm doing what I like. Watching young women sweat in skimpy tight clothing. 
I can relate to that. How did you end up with e I can relate to I couldn't help but notice your employee ID badge, Cav. What a lovely likeness of you. Oh, that? I don't really like that photo. I was, how you say, having a bad moose day? I suppose you're right. It doesn't hold a candle to the real thing. I guess I just like the way it dangles way out there in space. <laughs> Twisting slowly, slowly in the wind. You're rather funny for a man. Careful, pal. Lucky badge. You'd love to hang out with company like that. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> Larry, you are a weird one. But I like weird. Oh no. Oops. <laughs> Look, your badge got caught on my finger. Okay. And now I have to amputate my finger. <laughs> or you can give me your badge. Either way, you pick. <laughs> I don't care. I have to admit, in spite of your Y chromosome, I find you rather funny. Well then, take the badge. I get in anywhere I want to and without no stinking badges. <laughs> In fact, I have an idea. Let's meet later today for a sauna together, hmm? Bring your best girl and meet me in the Swedish sauna. We'll uh, double date, hmm? Excellent! Now, who will I get to play the role of my best girl? And what will Kat bring as her date? Cav's sexy, muscular b- Wonder if she's- How are- Oh, man! Watch it! Keep your hands off- Yo, Art! You again? Oh, okay. Come on, hop on. Hang on. We have reached the end of the line. Please watch your step getting off the tram. And thank you for riding Art's tram line. Ah, uh, please step out of the way. I, I need to turn my tram around. Uh, 
to lose something? Well, kind of. I was just thinking about heading over to the employee's campground for a cigar break, but I'm out of matches. Hey, Art, you want a match? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That'd be good. You know what they say, a woman is only a woman, but a good cigar is a smoke. Who said that, anyway? I don't know. Art often parks his tram here while he heads off for a smoke. I wonder what this baby looks like under the hood. The battery supplies all the tram's power. Without it, the tram wouldn't move, and Art would have to walk. The tram's toilet tank cleverly disguises an electric motor with power source. The tram... The tram... This pulley connects that one part of the motor to that other part over there. This pulley... If, if only you had a real tool... Yeah. Clever! You use the wrench to disconnect the power cable from the motor. This pulley connects that one part... That ought to cause this guy some trouble. Look out! Here comes the driver. There's no radio on the tram. Oh, I'd be gone back for this stupid ass tram. These young trees were planted right after La Costellata installed its new employees campground. It's dark in there. Where's my light? Excuse me, sir. May I be of assistance? Uh, maybe I can help you. How about if I hold your flashlight for you? Sure. <laughs> Anything is better than this. There. Does that help? Yeah. Perfect. Now I can see what's going on under here. It looks like some butthead disconnected my power cable. But I think I can force... Yeah! Got it! <laughs> now, let's see if it wakes. Art gave you a large flashlight containing at least six D-cells. You presume this baby could easily double as his nightstick. You deftly open the flashlight, extract Art's batteries, then close it up again, all without him noticing a thing. Slick move, Larry. There's no radio. Art often parks his tra Oh! There you go. Boy, that sure is a powerful flashlight. Yep, titanium alloy case, Fresnel lens, leather carrying case, and six D-cells worth of pure candle power. See you later, and if you ever need a ride, just say so. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. The tram is just leaving for Kingman, Barstow, Cucamonga, and all points west. Breathlessly, you insert Cavaricci Varney's employee ID card into the slot on the electronic lock and hope there's no careful photo-checking required.
The gate slides open with a clang. This tent contains the employee's canteen and dance hall. Inside, a man and a woman are alternately chugging beers to see who can stand up the longest. Right now, it looks like they're both losing. La Costellata has provided for their employees every need, including these genuine wooden picnic benches complete with splinters. Employees have paired off and are dirty dancing in the employees' canteen. She looks like she's in a serious chugging contest. Better not interrupt her. He looks like he's a... She looks... She look... She looks like... Six cold long necks. <laughs> she looks like These six red-hot D-cell batteries are fully charged and raring to go. Oh, now there's a girl you could really go for. Alive, female, under 80, everything you look for in a woman. You attempt to snatch her bikini top, but your hands are shaking and you're dripping sweat. Better forget that idea. Oh, you poor man. War accident. Hey, baby. You're my kind of broad. Oh, really? And exactly what kind of broad is that? Um, uh, I don't know. I've never got this far in the conversation before. Try that. A woman floats beside the pool bar. She appears to be sitting on a large green cylindrical pool float. A man floats beside the pool bar. He's sitting on something, but you can't tell quite what. Peering through Cav's record collection, you find one album that particularly excites you. Peering through... Peering... Charlotte Denae reclines in her mud bath. You cast your most radiant smile at her. Good enough for me. Don't 
just stand there staring. My money's beginning to harden. I know the feeling. Bye, Larry. I'm going down now. Don't you just love those photos? Oh, I get strongly charged just looking at that brochure. Oh, I really have no need for that. Here's your battery, Char. But I might mention I had to go through a lot of trouble just to find them. Oh, they're perfect! Woo-wee! There'll be a hot time in the old Shaw tonight. So, uh, what do you say? Uh, how about I climb in that mud with you for a little good, dirty fun? <laughs> oh, no, Larry. I have a much better idea. I've been in that Electroshock Exercise Center so much this week, I'm sure I know how to work it. Why don't we go over there for a little charge session? But don't they keep that door locked? Well, yes. But if you're smart enough to find me six heavy-duty D-cells in a health spa, I just know you can find a way into a locked door. You tentatively place the bare end of the electrical cord on the door's electronic lock and wait for something to happen. Nothing does. You often get exactly the same results. You tentatively... You often... Hmm? Huh? You don't need... Cleverly touching the electronic lock with the bare ends of your electrical cord, you pass 120 volts at high amperage through the electronic lock's delicately printed circuit boards, frying them immediately with a gratifying shower of sparks. The lock gives up the ghost as its solenoid freezes in a permanently open state with a loud click. Hey Charlotte, I've got it open! Come on in! Good work, Larry! I'll be right there. Just let me take a quick shower first, okay? I'll meet you inside in a few seconds. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Okay, Char. I'll see you in a few minutes. Right in here, okay? After I shower, I'll meet you in the Electroshock Exercise Center. Well, that's the end of that. I know I'll never see her again. Well, I suppose I have plenty of time to explore this place. Hi, Char. That was fast. I really rushed through my shower. I hope you don't mind. I'm still dripping wet and I didn't have time to put on any clothes. Uh-huh. Um, uh, no. Um, uh, that'll be fine. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but don't you need to be fully grounded, babe? Oh, don't worry your pretty head about me. Just take off all your clothes and hop up on that table. Okay, if you say so. Now lie flat on your back so I can have total access 
to your entire body. Hey, this may work out all right yet. To begin, I'll just smear some randomly selected appendages with some of this electroconductive jelly. Next, I'll attach these little alligator clips to various parts of your body. Tell me this was gonna hurt. <laughs> Besides, if I'm on the table and you're on the floor, how can this be any fun? Oh, silly. Just wait until I get your juices flowing. You've never felt anything like this in your whole life. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Okay. Now let me turn on the machine. I'm ready to crank up the voltage a little. Tell me when you start to feel it. Ooh, doesn't that feel grand? Feel good? I don't feel anything, Char. Strange. Well, let me give it a little more. There now. How does that feel? Great, isn't it? Great? I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling, but I don't feel a thing. Huh? I don't understand. I thought for sure I've been through this enough to know how to do it to you. Something's wrong, Char. Why don't you disconnect me and we'll just use this bench in the regular old way. What? I know there's something. Wait! There it is! Oh, silly me. <laughs> Look, Larry. It's this cable. Fiddle-dee-dee. -dee. It isn't plugged in. After a full night of sparkin', a little nap feels good. The high amperage of the SPA's electroshock exercise machine has transformed your genuine gold-plated medallion into a mass of molten metal now resembling modern sculpture. You decide to name it Suffering in Silence.
Finally! Good idea! If La Costellata was really thoughtful, Good idea! You flush the toilet. Hey, you, you're... Run your hand over the lavish carpeting. Ugh, what's this stuff in my hand? This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate lacoste la This door be to you pink top. No! No! Bad memories, eh, Larry? This is the cabinet that caused you so much pain. A large pearl earring lies on the floor, exactly where that naked woman dropped it as she ran screeching from the room. You have no desire to do anything in this hall, though you... La Costellata's electroshock exercise room is quite impressive. Filled with heavy-duty electrical equipment, circuit breakers, transformers, and insulators, it looks like it belongs in an electrical substation instead of a resort. And now you know how all this stuff works. The piston shaft is long, hard, and dry. This area receives the large red piston. These pipes must transport some sort of fluid across the room. Coyly opening every drawer in the table, you discover that Dr. Swinebutt cleaned out more than just his patients before he left town. There's a huge hole in the main vacuum line. Ow! Man, are these bolts tight! Your hands feel like they do when you try to twist off those bottle caps that don't. You cleverly loosen the bolts holding the filter tank's lid in place with your handy wrench. You'd take anything. 
The cellulite drainage salon's filter is totally clogged with a white, viscous substance with a sour aroma a little like spoiled seafood. Cleverly realizing the truck's tire is a source of pressurized air, you press the beaver's inflator onto the tire's valve stem. I, uh, hope that was good for you, too. You're just waiting for some joke about a full beaver, aren't you? Cellulite filter is now sparkling clean thanks to the spa's dishwasher. While the inside of the tank is covered with cellulite, it doesn't appear to be clogged. Removing that packed filter was a good idea. You tighten down the lid. It looks like there's a problem with the piston. Perhaps I should check it out more closely. You carefully rub the lard on your piston shaft in a slow, sensual, yet totally meaningful manner. Your mighty piston is now lubed and ready. That sucker! You'll never be able to suck hard enough with a hole that big in your hope. Hmm, what if I wrap this elastic belt around the hose? Is this the moment you've been waiting for? Oh, 
Oh, yeah! Dr. Swinebutt's mighty cellulite drainage machine appears to be in perfect working order once again. Congratulations, Larry. Now you're ready for Gammy. So did you do it, Larry? Did you fix the cellulite drainage salon? I sure did, Gammy. I told you I would, and I did. Would you like to be my first victim, um, sucker, uh, um, patient? Would I? Follow me, bub. Whoa, baby. Welcome to Cellulite City. I'll be right behind you, Gammy. Assuming I can take it. What does she have that I don't have? I can think of at least two things. Gammy is lying on the table, waiting for you to play mad scientist with her. Okay, Gammy, here we go. Lie very still while I stick this in. Ooh! <laughs> Your thighs. Oh, I knew that. All right, Gammy, here we go. I hope I got everything fixed. For your sake, I hope so, too. Now, this may take a while, Gammy. No, oh, I don't mind, Larry. I've waited so long for this moment. I can't tell you how strong my feelings are for you right now. You're such a wonderful man doing all this for little old me. But could I ask you one teeny weeny little tiny favor? Could you bring me a fresh orange? The sound of this machine has made me want to suck on something too. Don't even think about it, Larry. You were fortunate to find the last remaining fresh orange in the salad bar. Oh, why, thank you, darling. You certainly know how to treat a woman. Oh, but please don't stop what you're doing. I can just feel myself getting thinner and thinner, and I love it. I hope you'll remember all the trouble I went to when we're all done. You won't just forget about me, will you, Gammy? No, oh, don't you worry, Larry, my boy. You'll taste pleasures far sweeter than this orange. <laughs> yeah! Come on. 
Come on, Gammy. That's enough for one session. You've lost at least 16 inches. What do you say? No way. I'm no quitter. I want to have a girlish figure for once in my life. Just keep right on sucking, boy. <laughs> Remember, turnabout is fair play. Huh? Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, I sure could use a cool cloth for my fevered brow. In fact, I promise I'll make you a happy man. If I live through this. <sighs> Be sure to bring back a nice, cool cloth for my head. You know how good I'll look when you're done with me. Hey, you can never get a washcloth too wet. Burying the washcloth in the dirty ice, you leave it for a few seconds until it gets cold. That ought to do it. It was really clever how you cooled down this washcloth. Here you go, Gammy. Oh, Larry. Just place it there, on my forehead. Hey, where'd you wet this washcloth? It's covered with rust. Well, that does cool my temperature somewhat. But now I think what I really want is a nice bottle of mineral water. Oh, you'd do that for me, wouldn't you, Larry Honey Bunny? I'll make you one happy man when you do, believe you me. Oh, Larry, honey, don't forget my mineral water. I'm so dry. Amidst the leftovers of someone's recent meal, you find a brand new, unopened bottle of mineral water. You grab the bottle of mineral water from the tray, never knowing when you'll have a use for something without substance that's tasteless and overpriced. This door bears a tiny brat. I brought your mineral water, Gammy, and I think you'd better check out your new body. You look wonderful. Hey, it's about time you showed up with it. I feel like my eyeballs are about to be sucked into my body. Turn this thing off!
you're so svelte. <laughs> My golly, old Doc Swinebutt really knew his business, didn't he? My God, look at me. Oh, why, I do look wonderful. All my life I've hauled around a rear balcony, and now it's finally gone! I can't wait to show every single person in La Costalata my new body! But, Gammy, I thought maybe tonight, you know, after I helped you, you and I could, uh... Oh, Losser, you're so idealistic. Why would anyone who looks as good as I have anything to do with anyone who pfft, looks like you? <laughs> oh. Now that I can have any man I want, I intend to. Wait! Gammy! Stop! <sighs> Too late, Larry. She's gone. This area... Ow! Man, your hands feel... This area... These poor little probes have served their purpose. You crack the spigot a tiny bit and note a drop of cellulite comes out. This spigot must be connected to those huge tanks filled with Gammy's former hips. The old whale oil lamp's wick is still usable, which may not be the case with you, Larry. Good idea, Larry. It's a well-known fact that early settlers of the Old West often substituted cellulite when they ran out of whale oil. At least that's what Freddie Farkas, frontier pharmacist, told me. I told you so. She's just not good enough for you, my little manhandler. Oh, shut up. A banister leads downstairs, but probably not. Burgundy is La Costellata's hot new blues singer. Her picture is prominently featured in the La Costellata promo they run on Stallions. Burgundy is but their mother. Oops. Hey, what happened to my mic? How am I supposed to perform with no PA system? I buzz for a stage and he's coming right away, okay? Burgundy's Martin D35 sits resting in its stand. You wouldn't want to steal her guitar. Why not? Cause it's not a steel guitar. Perhaps you should try looking at her first. Excuse me, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Burgundy is a gorgeous woman dressed in a heavily sequined red cocktail dress covered with beads and jewels that seem strangely out of place in a blues bar.
She's dressed more like a country singer than a blues singer. Regardless, her bright red hair and brilliant green eyes make you want to hear whatever she's singing. Burgundy is... She's dressed... While you would gladly take anything Burgundy has to offer, there's nothing here for you to physically take. What's that? No thanks. My guitar already has a capo. Burgundy's green eyes sparkle with the fire of hundreds of old trash barrels burning in the night, while myriad country song lyrics bounce around inside her head like so many June bugs preparing to copulate themselves into oblivion with some backyard bug zapper. Would you say your name was Cowboy? Larry something? Laugher. <laughs> huh, laughter, huh? My name's Burgundy. I'm pleased to meet you, Burgundy. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed your singing. Why, thank you, little fella. You're kind of cute in a cur dog puppy kind of way. You know, I've never heard anyone sing the blues quite like you do, Burgundy. I sure hope not. Hell, honey, I ain't no goddamn blues singer. I'm country, through and through, and I'm proud of it. Country singer, huh? Then why are you working here in the blues bar? Why, I'm just killing time singing here while I'm waiting for my big break. You see, lots of record company execs like to hang out at ritzy spas like this one. Or at least so I've been told. Could I buy you a drink, Burgundy? She uh, yes, you sure could. But none of this faggy, citified dog drippings they serve in here. Man, could I go for a couple of lone stars? Yeah. But Burgundy, La Costa Lata doesn't serve alcoholic beverages anywhere. There's nothing here but fruit juice and mineral water. Don't I know it. But, cowboy, I'd love to wrap my lips around a tall one right about now. <sighs> Don't even think that, Larry. Hey, Burgundy, I found you some beer. Cold ones? Long necks? Yeah, boy, let me at them. <laughs> ah, that sure hits the spot. Mmm, <laughs> you know, I think that was even better than the first one. <laughs> Whee, it sure is hot in here. Will you hurry up, Gary? Her whining is even worse than her singing. I heard that. You know, I could just keep doing this all night. You're so hard on the equipment, Bergy. Did you screw up the plug again? <laughs> Same thing again. There, that should do it. Damn, I'm down to my last beer, little buddy. <laughs> tasting, tasting! Testing. All set, Burgundy honey. Have you done your medley from the Fantastics yet? Get out of here! <laughs> Looks like Gary done fixed my audio problem. Time to head back to the salt mines. Burgundy is too busy performing to talk with but their Oops. Oh, damn it to hell, there it goes again. Hey, you gonna fix this thing? 
Come on, Gary's on his way, Burgundy. He should be. Would you say your name was? Laffer. Huh. I'm pleased. I just wanted to tell you. Why, th You're just trying to envision your lips going in there, aren't you? You're just trying. You know, I've never heard anyone sing the blues quite. Uh, country. Could I buy. See it. But Burgundy. Don't I know it. Don't. But don't. Don't. Yo! You again! Hang on! We have reached the end of the line! And thank you for writing a- Ah! Uh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You know- Oops! Yeah! I, uh, was just, um, uh, going for a mineral water. Sorry, boy, but you're out of luck. All they got back there is beer, <laughs> and plenty of it. Whew. Breathlessly, you insert Cavarici Varney's employee ID card. The gate... Six is about all the bottles you can carry. Perhaps you should try looking at her. Burgundy is still hard. Oops. Oh, damn it. Hey, come on. You look to me like you're still thirsty, Burgundy. How about another sixer? Beer? Yeah! I'm so sick of this crap they're serving in here, I could just puke. Thank you, little buddy. <laughs> you know, I really love this stuff. Man, there ain't nothing like a good cold one every now and then. It's so hot in here. <laughs> Why, darling, excuse little old me. <laughs> Damn, does it seem hot in here to you? I'm burning up. <laughs> ah, damn it, Larry, I gotta have a break. Ain't you got privilege to the sauna? Why, yes, Burgundy. I believe the sauna is open to all guests. Well, it sure ain't open to us performers. I could sure use a nice sweat about now. What do you say you and me get all sweaty together? In fact, I've been looking for a date to the sauna tonight for quite a while. I'm going to meet some uh, uh, friends there later on. I'd be pleased if you would be my guest. Sounds good, little buddy. Just give me a minute so as I can get out of this damn heavyweight sparkly dress. You go on ahead. I'll meet you there in about two shakes of a cow's tit. How colloquial. Guess she's gonna take that sixth beer with her. Oh well. Off to the sauna. This door bears a...
This door bears a You don't want, you don't, don't, this is, this is, Hi, Burgundy. I'm so glad to see you're really here. I'm here all right, honey. Mosey on over and sit down beside little old Burgundy. Oh, it's hotter than Fresno in here. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. Well, I do enjoy a sauna. And especially with a woman as beautiful as you. Me too. Hot and sweaty is perfect. And we're alone. Um, not for long, Burgundy. Remember I told you how um, I, I, I took the liberty of inviting another couple? Uh, here they are now. Uh, Cabarici? Is that you? Hi, Larry. Who's your friend? Cavarici Vornay, meet Burgundy Bodine. Berg, this is Cav. Bonjour. How are you? So, Cav, where's your date? Coming soon? Date? I didn't say anything about bringing a date. But of course you did. No, I asked if you wanted to double date. I consider this doubled. What's the matter, Larry? Can't stand a little competition? Don't tell me, Larry. This is not your first menage à trois. Hey, Larry, I don't know about this kinky crap. I'm just a plain old-fashioned country girl. You didn't say nothing about no menagerie come Troy. Gee, girls, I've never been with two women before, especially two as beautiful as you two. Uh, where do I begin? You're right, Larry. Burgundy is a beautiful woman. Just look at how those delicate beads of perspiration glide down her shoulders, across her chest, and disappear behind that totally unnecessary white towel. Oh, Cav, you're one to talk. Just look at you. That poor towel of yours is gonna be stretched completely out of shape by your sexy figure. It is getting hot in here. I've got an idea. Why don't one of you move over here to my left side, and then I could put an arm around both of you? That's an idea, Larry. Perhaps we'll do that later. But right now, I want to get to know Burgundy. Berg? I know I've seen you around here. Don't you work in the lounge? Tell me all about yourself. Everything. Oh, there's nothing much to tell. I'm just a simple country girl waiting for my big break in showbiz. Only took the job and I cost a lot as blues bar to fill in time between tours. Why, that's fascinating. But what's even more fascinating is watching the light dance in those beautiful eyes of yours. 
You illuminate the whole room with your smile, mon amour. Uh, I was gonna say that, Burgundy. You uh, <laughs> sure are pretty. Why, thank you, Cavalricci. A bucket filled with water waits beside the heated rocks. Um, would you like me to turn down the temperature in here? Are either of you uncomfortable? Would you like me to rearrange the seating here? Is anybody listening to me? Burgundy, your hair is so beautiful. Soft and manageable, yet holds its shape so nicely. You're fortunate to be so blessed. All oh, this? Anyone can have hair like this? Please don't hate me for my beautiful hair. When did I slip into a Pantene ad? Wow, it sure is getting late. <laughs> my, my, look at the clock. Guess we may as well all turn in now. Oh, Cal, it is getting warm in here. My silver bracelet's so hot it's burning my wrist. Don't worry about that, Sherry. Let's talk more about you and me, hmm? Oh, Cav. I'm beginning to have the strangest feeling about tonight. But not strange, darling. When things are right between two people, why fight it? Relax and enjoy the new sensations. Hey! I want some new sensations, too. How about a little steam, girls? Here, let me pour a little water on the rocks. Oops! Sorry. I, uh, spilled the whole bucket. <laughs> now it really is steamy, isn't it? Cap? Bird? What the? Dough. Once again, Larry, the best man didn't win. And this time, you were in a one-man race. The water bucket still lies where you dropped it. You don't need an empty bucket. A beautiful silver bracelet still lies on the wooden bench, right where Burgundy left it. I'll be sure to return Burgundy's silver bracelet to her. Right. Don't. Ah, a nice hot shower always makes me feel like a new man. Meet and here I am.
Oh, it's a ruby-chested sunbather. Ah, uh, too bad, buddy. Vietnam? Uh, excuse me, isn't that my sunscreen on your back? No, it's Pat's. He'll be back in just a moment. Oh. Well, I'll be going now. You got that right. Excuse me. No. Uh, well, you got... What a luxurious place! You deftly attach the dental floss to the sunglasses polishing cloth to form... a rather small European-style swimsuit. Hmm? You wouldn't dare wear that trifling little thing anywhere except poolside. Try placing the swim... A head. Try placing. Try placing the swimsuit on yourself instead. Try play. Try. Try placing. Try placing. You wouldn't dare wear that tri- You won't need any of the inviting crystal clear pool water. There's just- Try that- You're not close enough to reach what's on the bottom. A male customer sits at the other side of the bar, riding an inflatable pussy, quietly drinking by himself. He seems to be no match for you in your quest to finally net yourself a catch like that babe on the cucumber. So, how do you order a drink here, stranger? Flap your tail, I guess. Hey, hey but more importantly, <laughs> have you heard the one about her? <laughs> oh no, it's you again. I remember you from Lefty's Bar, in the land of the lounge lizards. Well, Mike, I guess you're gonna hate Thursdays. <laughs> How do you think I rang the doorbell, lady? <laughs> Don't do that. If you Keep your gherkin away from that cucumber. This woman is so beautiful, you nearly swoon and slip off your beaver. You realize it's going to take a little something extra to get to talk to this doll. You decide to order a drink. Yes, sir, you slapped? Yes, I'd like to order a drink for myself and the, uh, <coughs> beautiful young lady floating beside me. Very good, sir. Do you have any identification? Really? Just order a drink. I've got enough to do without making small talk with the likes of you. Want to talk? Talk to this guy. He's always got something to say. Yeah, right. <laughs> you look exactly like Cavaricci Varney. I wonder how many badges that dyke goes through in a month. Sir, please, I'm not like the other girls around here. Really, just order a drink. I've got enough to do without making small talk with the likes of you. Want to talk? Talk to this guy. He's always got something to say.
I'm sorry, but if you have no proof of your status here, I'll be unable to fill your order. I would look so cool wearing these out by the swimming pool, <laughs> but not here. You decide. Yes, sir. You slapped? Yes. I'd like to order a drink for myself and the, uh... <clears throat> Very good, sir. Ah, oh, yes, sir. What would you like? I'd like a tequila sunrise and, uh... How about a King Alphonse for the lady? I'm sorry, sir. This is a health spa. We only have healthful drinks here. Instead of that poison you ordered, I'll bring you something better. A seaweed sunrise and, um, a King Alfalfa for the lady. Seaweed? Ugh! Um, how about a frozen daiquiri? Frozen daiquiri? Oh, you mean a frozen broccoli. Coming right up. Here you are, sir. That will be $50. Like I care. As long as you charge it to my room. Here you go, babe. Enjoy your drink. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, these drinks are watered down. What did you expect? I have to carry them underwater. I couldn't help but notice you hanging out here at the pool bar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Laughter? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I'm Merrily. Merrily Lowe has thick, wavy, strawberry blonde hair. In fact, Merrily is strawberry cheesecake. Gee, with those huge bolts of green cloth in the way, you can hardly tell what her breasts look like. Wow, look at that! My boyfriend has one of those, only his sticks out. Wow! May I have a few of those drops of water, Merrily? <laughs> Larry, just order a drink like everyone else does. Ooh, you caveman, you! <laughs> you men are all alike. Just because a woman wears a simple, tasteful bikini, all you think about is groping. Hey now, what kind of girl do you think I am anyway? Well, I was ho- One of those sleazy babes you met in Larry 2 or 3. Well, yeah. Huh, well, you'll never find out that way. Is your drink okay, Mare? Oh sure, good enough. 
I'm not picky. I just try to stay happy all the time. You certainly have a beautiful smile, Mare. You must be enjoying yourself immensely. Oh, no. I'm miserable, actually. In fact, I'm more than just a little pissed off at La Costa Lada's silly management and their strict adherence to local laws. Why, Mare, whatever is the matter? Is there anything I can do? Oh, Larry, you're so sweet to be concerned about little me. But really, there's nothing you can do. This monkey I've got to carry on my own back. No one can break an addiction for you. I must handle it by myself. Addiction? Local laws? Mare, are you in some sort of trouble? Is it drugs? All right. Here's our chance to add some socially redeeming value to this little saga. Drugs? How gauche. It's nothing so mundane as that. No, it's worse. Far worse. Larry, I, I may as well be honest with you. I... I suffer from... From... I... I... I suffer from... B.A. B.A.? It's... You're addicted to luggage tie-downs? No, silly. Bungee jumping. I want to do nothing in life but jump. Well, it started simply enough. A first small hit at a friend's party, then cranes at local county fairs, later a few bridges here and there. But I got to the point where I had to have more, constantly more, higher, deeper, longer. I was going down 40 or 50 times a day. I graduated to balloons, but even that wasn't enough. But then, I heard about La Costa Lata. Here? This place? <laughs> Get your head out of the bikinis, Larry, and take a look straight up. I don't get it. You should be overjoyed to have a setup like this. What's the problem? These provincial thinkers. That's what's wrong. They have some sort of stupid law that limits you to 10 jumps per day. I'm not sure, but uh, isn't there something in the Constitution about this? Yeah, in the part about the right to arm bears, I think. Oh, that there was. And do you know what's worse? You mean, there's something worse than only getting to bungee jump ten times per day? Uh, what is it? Well, I've, I've gotten to the point where I can only become sexually aroused if I'm high in the air, tied up with long rubber ropes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Larry, have you figured out a way for me to gain access to the bungee jumping tower yet? No, but... I'm giving it lots of thought. <laughs> that tickles! Hoping she'll... S oh! Mayor Thanks for wiping that stuff off. I don't know what that was. <laughs> you run... Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. I lost a bobby pin in there somewhere. <laughs> you... You attempt... You attempt... Ooh! You... <laughs> I notice people are getting something from you. Uh, uh, what is it? Sir, besides the important job of guarding the lives here at the pool, I'm also responsible for maintaining stricter security over our combination high diving tower and bungee jumping platform. The gate to the tower, which you may have noticed over there, well, it's kept securely locked at all times. Uh, no one. And I mean, absolutely, no one is allowed admittance without proving their qualifications to yours truly. 
Guest safety is our first concern here at La Costa Lada. We can't afford to have any of our paying customers injured in any way. You understand? Oh, I'm not a paying customer. I'm here on a freebie. Oh, well, here you go, pal. The key to the diving tower looks just about like every other key in the spa. The key you swiped from the hotel lobby looks like all the other hotel keys, but has slightly different bumps. Hey, you! What in the hell do you think you're doing with my key? Damn, he saw you. But it really is a good idea to make an impression of that key. If only there was some place nearby where Billy D couldn't see you. It looks like you're above the atmosphere, but that's an illusion caused by the curvature of the Earth. You're really only a few miles up. Oh God, looking down at those buildings is making you nauseous. This is the accursed ladder you wish you had never climbed. Oh God, it looks like... Good idea! That lifeguard will never notice you making an impression of his key in your bar of soap from this height. Now you know why they call this impressive soap. It's a good thing something around here knows how to leave a good impression. Yes, you carefully file this key with your bastard file, using the impressed soap for a pattern. Now you have your very own tower key. Because of your cleverness, this once humble unknown room key is now an exact copy of the key to the bungee jumping tower. The key to the... This... Yeah. Sorry, Larry, but you'd never forgive yourself if you had to crawl back down that ladder like a helpless kitten. You know the only way down from here that will keep what little self-esteem you have left is... Jump! It seems... That really hurt. Here's your key back, Mr. D. Or may I call you Billy? Preferably, don't call me. Look what I have for you, Mayor. Your own personal copy of the key to the bungee jumping tower. Ah! Oh, Larry! My hero! You're just wonderful! Okay, meet me tonight, late, after everyone else is asleep, and we'll go down together! Gee, I wonder if we could just cut to later tonight. Later that night. Oh, Larry, I 
hope your key works as well as that transition. I thought we were going to have to wait around here until nightfall or something. The coast is clear, Mare. Open the gate. Ladies first. <laughs> Only a few hundred feet to go! <sighs> How about we take a little break? No way, Larry! Come on! A little exercise will do you a world of good! Besides, wait till you see the view from the top of the bungee tower at night! Oh my god! How high are we? From this height, you swear you can see the curvature of the Earth. Merrily's bungee cords lie coiled like vipers, ready to strike the first unwary male who climbs into her lair. From this height, you Why have a warning light on this tower? No airplane can fly this high. Mare's beautiful hair is sparkling in the moonlight, and at this height, there's very little air to cloud your view. Mayor, are you sure it's safe up here? Why, there's not even a railing around this thing. <laughs> of course, silly. Now come over here, by me. <laughs> oh, yes, Larry. That feels wonderful. Go ahead, I'm yours for the taking. Go ahead. Ooh, how the touch of rubber against my blood turns me on. You are beginning to excite me, Larry. Ooh. Aren't you ever afraid of falling? I mean, I'm no acrophobia, but this is the highest I've ever been. Except for one time during spring break in Fort Lauderdale when I hung out with young Billy Clinton. <laughs> Afraid of falling? Silly Larry, falling's the best part! Aren't you ever afraid of falling? Mmm, <laughs> Larry, I'm beginning to feel that old feeling again. Oh, yes! Larry, hurry! Get undressed! Now! Uh <laughs> well, don't just stand there in all your nakedness! Get over here! Come and get okay, Mayor. I'm coming. <laughs> Not without me, I hope. Mayor, I hope you're not gonna jump tonight and leave me alone up here. Oh no, silly. There's only one thing I enjoy more than bungee jumping. You may think I'm an airhead who's never had an original thought. What? Why would I think that? Especially now. But I do know something about life and love and happiness. Well, really, Mare, that's not important right now. Oh, but it's something I simply must say. In fact, I'll whisper it in your ear right now. What? My God, Marilee! I'm dumbfounded! That's amazing! You are so wise! An ultimate truth! I'm... I'm... <laughs> Isn't that just like a man? Always has to get off first! 
Quiet, Larry. You'll wake the entire resort. Now you've done it. You've awakened the entire resort. Everybody is staring out their windows at you, foolishly bungee jumping in the middle of the night wearing nothing but embarrassment. You are exhausted after your all-night naked bungee jumping session with Merrily. You could say you're at the end of your rope. These are the words of wisdom I learned from Merrily. They're very special, and I'm not about to say them out loud. The high amperage of the SPA's electroshock exercise machine has transformed your genuine gold-plated medallion into a mass of molten metal now resembling modern sculpture. You decide to name it Suffering in Silence. Final. Good idea. How nice! Your bathroom has floor-to-ceiling glass walls look... Ah! This stainless steel toilet seat cover holder blocks the view a little and for no purpose. Good idea! You flush the toilet. Hey look, Burgundy left her dress hanging backstage. Looks like Burgundy won't be needing this again, since she now has access to an unlimited supply of Marine Corps fatigues. Oh boy, free matches! Welcome to Comfortable Kula Munda. Oshibli, I hope you love this gown. I really think it's you. Oh, Larry! Oh, it's perfect. Oh, you little devil. Whatever can I do to repay you? Why don't you meet me tonight down at the beach and we'll take a midnight swim together? Just the two of us alone in the moonlight. 
What do you say? I say, uh, <laughs> I'll be there. Until tonight, Shubly. Shabli looks beautiful here on the beach in the moonlight with those waves softly licking the shore. What? Oh, how rude. Oh, Larry, I like that. She's ready to give you even more than you can take, Lap. Chablis looks beautiful here on the beach in the moonlight, with those waves softly licking the shore. Hi, Larry. I've been waiting for you. I brought a little something for us. Champagne. Chilled. With two glasses. Have I ever told you I find your eyes exciting? No, but please do. Uh, well, uh, I find your eyes exciting. Oh, you do? Chablis here, in the moonlight, beside a warm campfire. Sitting on her blanket alone on the beach in a romantic mood. And you're thinking about drinking? Have I ever told you I find... No. Uh... Oh. Oh. Not yet, Larry. Ah, uh, Shabli. Would it be premature to request a little kiss? Take me, big boy. Ah, uh, Shabli. Would it be premature to request... Take me. Oh, Larry. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Come here, you beautiful thing. Oh, man, Shabli. I've kissed quite a few women in my time, but I've never experienced anything quite like that. Mary, perhaps you finally found someone who really knows what a man wants. Oh, Larry. Come here, you be- Oh, man, Shibli. Mary. I'm ready, baby. I hope you brought a condom. Oh. Ooh. I was hoping you brought one of those. Here. Let me have it. I'm ready when you are. No wonder.
You don't really need a shower now. It sure feels shaky. Through your deluxe room's deluxe window, you can see various deluxe parts of this deluxe resort. I wonder how often the Costalata has to be reluxed. Like you always say, a little warm champagne never hurt anyone. Besides, I earned this. Oh, now there's a girl you... All the hotel room doors are exactly alike. This door bears... You could use this dirty ice in your... Pouring the old melted ice into the little receptacle on the ice machine, you prepare to catch a few new cubes. Chablis champagne is iced down and ready to go. This door bear all the hotel room door. This door The dumb waiter on the far wall is used to deliver meals to the hotel's penthouse apartment. You bang on the door, never noticing the control panel right beside the dumb waiter. You press the green button on the dumb waiter's control panel and see the doors slide open. Now, how are you going to fit inside that tiny chamber? It doesn't do anything now, of course. The dumbwaiter doors are already open. But if they were closed, you could just reach out here and press... Hey, wait a minute. If the doors were closed, you wouldn't be able to reach out here. You'd be trapped inside. Two shoji screens are placed with great care so as to perfectly complement the other Japanese decor and to manipulate the ambient light in a paraphrastic bit of kajistry. It's a kotatsu, one of those low Japanese-style dinner tables. 
What an open, uncluttered, minimalist decor. You wonder what the rent is on a place like this. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Private. You try the knob and find it locked. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Penthouse. Think of the thousands of vegetables that gave their all on this table. A simple arrangement of three tropical flowers adorns the far wall like a sculpture. A saltwater aquarium is built into the far wall. A very few extremely expensive fish swim lazily back and forth. How unusual! A natural gas fireplace burning with an intense blue flame at a tropical resort. The doors flung open while the air conditioner runs at full force. Obviously this woman has no financial problems either. You stick the match in the fireplace, being careful to keep it just above the water. Good idea! Your burning lamp bears a remarkable resemblance to the universal symbol of learning. Three perfect roses rest in individual vases in a perfect example of beauty and simplicity. This must be one fascinating and confident woman to decorate so tastefully and yet sparingly. A very modern chimney removes the smoke generated by that fireplace. Shamara is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And she's not at all shy. Shamara is everything you've dreamed of in a woman, and more, perfect in every way. You feel sure there's no way a woman like her could become interested in a man like you. But that's never stopped you before. The gentle trade winds blow Shamara's hair in bold cascades, leaping playfully back and forth, occasionally covering her shoulders, then exposing their creamy glory. How you'd love to take off all your clothes and dive into either of those aquamarine pools she calls eyes. Shamara's lips are full and soft, eminently kissable. Shamara's ears are tiny, perfectly formed seashells. You'd love to hold her to your ear and see if you could hear her roar. Hmm, methinks not. I... You don't dare risk offending this woman. You may never get so close to one so perfect again. Oh, have I died and gone to heaven? Who are you? And which department of the spa do you represent? I don't recognize your strange uniform. Are you with the kitchen help? When did they start dressing retro? And why? Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Oh, I don't... Uh, wait, wait uh, actually, that's right. I, I do work for the spa. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Laffer? I'm Shamara Payne. Please state your business here. Um, uh, well, um, I, I, I believe there was some, uh, report downstairs, uh, about the dumbwaiter. Yep, <laughs> your dumbwaiter was written up. <laughs> Have you had trouble with your dumbwaiter? Dumbwaiter? No, not really. At least no more than usual. Oh. Are you just going to stand there doing nothing, Mr. Larry Laffer? Do you always sit here, Shamra, just staring out at the ocean? Yes. Once I led a frenetic life, double-clutching espressos at 6 a.m. power breakfasts, concording my way across the pond. Why, I once even owned an Apple Newton. Wow. But one day, I finally looked at myself in my apartment's mirrored ballroom and realized 
I may be fabulously wealthy. I may be at the top of my chosen profession. I may hang out with the Cognoscenti. Damn, I should have packed a thesaurus. But am I happy? Well, yes, I was. Quite. But more importantly, does my life have meaning? Why am I alive? What difference would it make if I just checked out? So, in what I felt was an extremely Goganish move, I left my penthouse in the care of my servants and moved to this rather deserted island to live a spartan life of contemplation and thought, living off room service and new age music until I can fathom my meaningless life. Rich. Good. Thoughtful. Bad. Let me see if I understand this, Shamara. You're successful, wealthy, and happy, so you gave up everything to sit and think. Yes, Larry. I have everything. And yet, I have nothing. Uh, I don't know. You've got a great pair of tits. And what has your contemplation taught you, Shamra? Oh, nothing really. But lately I've been wondering about the lack of men in my life. What a coincidence. I'm horny too. I often think that myself. About men? Oh, your sexual orientation or deviation is unimportant to me. What I seek is the perfect man. Oh, that leaves me out. Not physically perfect, you understand? But rather spiritually perfect. Someone sensitive, intelligent, creative, wise. Oh, I'm out of here. It sounds to me like you're just another self-made, wealthy, healthy, new age, 90s, fast-paced dropout looking for meaning in an otherwise meaningless existence. Why, yes, Larry. That's exactly it. You were paying attention. But can you help me? Can anyone lead me out of this funk? All right, this ultimate babe will be mine. If only I can find something around this dump to please her. It sounds to me... What can... All right, if... I want you to have this flower. An orchid. How beautiful. How high school promise. But you wouldn't just give me an orchid, would you? That would be too simple. Well, I... No, this is not merely an orchid. Let me think. It's natural and beautiful and unique and... Wait! I see! You're using this orchid to symbolize the perfection and purity of nature. How natural things are best. How the world can create millions of these flowers, no two alike, just like human beings. And thus, with a simple flower, you are encouraging me to recognize my own individuality, my own uniqueness, my oneness with nature, my own connection to the everlasting life force. Hell, I just thought it was kind of pretty. I knew you'd understand. Talk all you want, you'll never get her to raise those arms. Do you always sit here? Yeah, what? but one... Damn. But am I happy? Well, yes, but more in... So? In what I felt was an extremely Goganish move, I left my penthouse in the ca Rich. Do you always Yes, but, but well yes, but more so Rich. You wonder if Shamara's lips taste as good as they look. Hmm. Me you don't For you, Shamara. An old lamp, huh? And burning with such an unusual fragrance, too. Why on earth would a man show up on my balcony, bring me out of my reverie, make me rethink my chastity, just to give me a sandy old lamp? 
Unless... Unless... Unless that old lamp is a symbol, a representation of... of... of the lamp of knowledge! Surely this is no ordinary beach find, but rather a symbol of the importance of lifelong learning, of the pursuit of knowledge, of the need to continue to grow as a person throughout my life. Oh, Larry, I will continue to grow. I do want to keep learning new things. I just wonder where I'll be able to find another teacher as wise as you. Gee. I was just hoping we could burn it by the tub tonight, and you could play Susan Sarandon. You don't need another teacher, Shamara. I'll be glad to teach you everything I know. Shamara, I brought you this sterling silver bracelet. I hope you like it. Oh, Larry, I have no need for bracelets. Once I had hundreds of bracelets, nearly all of them better than this. Oh, I just thought perhaps. But wait. That's not what you're trying to say, is it? This isn't a simple gift, is it? I bet it's much more. The superficial old me would have seen this bracelet as merely a clumsy attempt at a cheap gift. Probably an ulterior motive. Suspicious as always of a man offering me silver in expectation of future rewards. But you, you're different. You're as transparent as my pants, teaching me to achieve a higher level of consciousness, a deeper understanding. You're helping me scale these mental walls I've built around myself these last few months. I... No, Larry, please, allow me to bring my thoughts to fruition. I understand now. It's obvious. You're not trying to buy me off with this cheap silver bracelet, are you? You're speaking in symbols, aren't you? You're challenging me to overcome my shallowness. And I will, rest assured. But a silver bracelet? What can this mean? Oh, I'm so foolish. Such a lightweight. Of course I see it now. Your gift symbolizes the spirit of life itself. A ring with no beginning, no end. A solid circle chasing itself round and round a vast emptiness. Much like my quest for spiritual fulfillment, which it looks like it must be far, far away, but which, when you finally open your eyes to discover it, has actually been right at your feet the entire time. Oh, Larry, your wisdom is so powerful. I believe I'm finally beginning to understand. I just thought you'd look good wearing nothing but a bracelet. Yep, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. <laughs> You're really catching on to me, Sham. Shamra, I hope you like this diamond. It was a gift from a friend of mine. Another diamond? Thanks, Larry, but I have dozens of... Oh, wait. It's a symbol, isn't it? Let's see. What could a diamond represent in your superior way of thinking? Hmm. This is a tough one. Diamonds are a girl's... No, it can't be about friendship. Could it be a way to cut through my cynicism and jadedness? I've got it. You're trying to tell me that even someone like me who has been under great pressure for so many years, can use that pressure to transform myself from a dark mental lump of coal into a transcendent human of crystalline purity and beauty. Why, uh, yes, I think that. And you're saying I don't have to give up my tough exterior in order to achieve perfection. How wonderful, Larry. How insightful you are. How wise! How lucky. Why, thank you, Shamara. I'm glad you caught my little message. <laughs> I think you need to give yourself more credit than you do.
You wonder if La Costellata has a jeweler who could mount this on one of your gold chains. Shamra, I think you should have this pearl. Oh, Larry, I have no need for more jewelry. Besides, while this might be a large pearl, it does have a slight flaw over here. But wait, you're not just giving me yet another bauble. Your thinking is far too sophisticated for that. It is? You're right, it is. I see now what you're implying. It's true, I know. I, I've spent my life basing my opinion of objects upon their financial value instead of on their inherent beauty. Missing the beauty of the tree by acknowledging only the net profit to be gained by harvesting the forest. Missing the glory of a solitary canyon while recognizing only its landfill potential. Missing the solitude of a seashore while buying up the oil drilling rights. So exactly what is it you're trying to get me to see in this simple pearl, Larry? Uh, well... Oh, of course you won't tell me. That would be too simple. I know you want me to discover the meaning here by myself. Yes, of course. Hmm... Hmm... I've got it! The iridescent shimmer of a simple sphere created naturally by one of Earth's simplest creatures from the irritation of a single grain of sand layered with bodily secretions over a lifetime creating an object of classic beauty. You're telling me to accept the imperfections in my character that have been troubling me these past few months. To accept the irritations that life has handed me. To stop trying to remove all irritants from my life. To cover my irritations with layers of love so they become points of strength and beauty instead. I am? Uh, I am. Oh, Larry. I've never had a man talk with me this way. Treat me this way. Express things in such wonderful, subtle ways. Me neither. That's just the kind of guy I am, I guess. The high amperage of the sp No, on second thought, I don't think she'd care for that. <laughs> I have this, uh, object. Ah, so I see. It's beautiful. It is? It is. I'd like you to have it. Why, thank you, Larry. It's not only beautiful, but I bet it's important and probably meaningful, too. But exactly what is its meaning? Aha! Of course! To me, it symbolizes the important role that art plays in all our lives. And not just art, but the arts in general. Music, painting, dance, performance, sculpture, drama, all have the ability to move us spiritually above the fetid plane of our daily dreary existence and take us to a realm apart. A place where, if we're fortunate, another tiny fraction of the ultimate truth may be revealed, where we cease for a few fleeting moments to be these self-consumed blobs of protoplasm and share in the endless quest for true enlightenment. Gosh, I thought she could get a couple of bucks for it as scrap metal. You're right, Shamra. I'm glad you like it. Camera, there's something I simply must tell you. May I whisper in your ear? Of course, Larry. But what is it? It's just a little something I learned recently. Oh, my God! But of course! Why didn't I ever realize that before? You're right. It makes everything so clear. I've been a fool. Oh, Larry, you are a sensitive, 
thoughtful, caring, sharing New Age man. Good thing it wasn't something dirty, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just thought you'd want to know. Shamra, I've given you all my <coughs> hard-earned knowledge. Now, will you share this champagne with me? Oh, yes, Larry. I would love to. I just hope that I can somehow find a way to express my appreciation for all you've done for me. Your wisdom has clarified so many things for me, enabling me to reach higher planes of understanding than I've even dreamed of before. You've shown me the purpose of life. You've given meaning to my otherwise meaningless existence. How can I ever repay you? Well, there is just one little itty-bitty thing that we haven't covered yet. Besides your breasts, that is. Sex. Uh, I mean, Shamra. Uh, don't you think it's time we uh, explore the inner workings of your inherent womanhood? Sex? Oh, Larry, I'm sorry to say that for me, sex is hopeless. You see, I've been celibate my entire life. During school, I was always too busy overachieving to waste time dating. Once I started work, I was under such pressure to succeed that I never allowed myself the distraction of men. If you think my understanding of life is weak, I regret to say I have no knowledge whatsoever of the sexual part of my existence. Are you trying to say... Yes, it's sad, but true. You're a virgin? <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. I hope I haven't disappointed you. Ah, Sham, don't worry about it. Remember, I'm here to help you in every way. Oh, could you, Larry? Is there any way you could do for me physically what you've done for me spiritually. God knows I'll be glad to try. But are you willing to keep working as hard as you have been? Oh, I will, Larry. I promise. Then uh, let's go inside, uh, sit by the fire, and begin drinking a little of this champagne. Oh, thank you, Larry. I promise to give it my all. And here's to you, Larry Laffer.
Thank you.